All right. A Slingerland Festival Snare 14 by 5.5. Let's see what we got here. Hey everybody, welcome back to Seafoam Studios. So today we're going to be checking out this Slingerland 14x5 Festival Snare. So a few things about this, I'm taking it apart as we speak because I plan on attempting a full restoration on this snare to the best of my ability. This is my first time ever trying anything like this, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm taking the lugs off, I'm taking off the rims, I'm taking every part of this off of the shell. I want it to be on its own. So I got the Slingerland off of someone from Facebook for about $60, which is a pretty good deal. Unfortunately though, with $60 comes that WD-40 you see I need to use because there's going to be a lot of rust on this, there's going to be a lot of damage to this snare that I need to fix. So those are just the lugs, I'm spraying them down with WD-40 and I'm just going to let them sit for like 24 hours. So I'm still attempting to take everything off of the snare because a lot of the pieces are old. They've been in that snare drum since probably before Ronald Reagan was president. So I'm trying to be careful and I don't want to damage this thing. So I have a lot of respect for Slingerland snare drums. For one thing, they're from the Midwest technically. I mean, they were Kalamazoo, Michigan was their old headquarters. And I'm from the Midwest, so definitely got some, uh, got some representation there. But the other big thing is the fact that I have played on a Slingerland before. Uh, I played on a Slingerland snare one time at a friend's house. He was selling me his drum kit. Unfortunately, didn't come with it. And man, it was incredible. I've been like hypnotized by them ever since. So I'm excited to get to restore this snare on my own time. I am able to accomplish this task with just a few simple tools. So some lithium white grease, uh, some WD-40, of course, as you already saw, and some turtle wax. So chrome polish and rust remover. So I know the WD-40 is rust remover, but it's good to use both in this case, and you'll see how. Uh, not pictured in here is some goof off I'm also gonna be using. It'll mostly be used on the inside of the snare drum, which you'll see that shortly. So right now I'm taking the chrome parts, at least most of them, the rims and the shell itself, and I'm cleaning them down with the turtle wax, the chrome polish and rust remover. And I really should have used gloves for this, but let me just explain the process. Essentially, you're gonna need two rags, and the direction stated that you wanna use a really soft, maybe microfiber type towel like I used here to spread and buff the, or rather just spread the turtle wax and make sure it gets in all the spots. It's the important part. Then you wanna take a rag that's a bit rougher, you know, nothing too rough, but just a little bit of bite to it just to use some elbow grease and really get all of the turtle wax off of there. and. When you do that properly, as I did, it gives it a beautiful shiny coat. I'm doing the exact same thing with the shell of the snare drum. Unfortunately, there was a bit of rust on it, which this chrome polish and rust remover didn't quite get rid of. So that's where you're going to see me hit with the WD-40 in a little bit. But by the time I was done with this, I was really impressed with the results. I highly recommend this product. Obviously, I'm not endorsed by them or anything, but I definitely plan on using this same product on other projects in the future, including just cleaning my drums. So pretty much I left these nuts and bolts in here overnight and you could tell that the Rust has definitely come off of them. There's still some glue attached to them, some type of adhesive. I'm just going to wipe that off in a little bit. I sprayed this same WD-40 I used for that onto here. And I'm going to try scrubbing that off in about a couple hours, see how it works. So I ended up waiting about an hour or two and I came back to this and I started scrubbing away at it and then I got a good coat of the rust off but I noticed underneath it, it still retained that brown color which I researched a few ways but nothing really worked getting it off but I got down pretty low so I was happy about the rust prevention but inside was the real problem. I realized it wasn't supposed to be this fog hat gray when I started scrubbing with some goof off. You can see like the parts that were a bit more shiny the whole inside was supposed to be chrome as well. So that's when I pulled out that goof off you see to my side there and I'll get a better picture of it in the camera shortly. And I just begin scrubbing away at this thing for the better part of an hour and a half. And it took a lot, but it got 
just about all of it off of there and I was really happy about that because honestly you want to get as much of that gunk off of there as you can I don't know what better term to use to describe it but you want the snare to be as clean as possible before you put it all back together I don't really want to cut corners on this project So there's the Goof Off, I highly recommend it. It was an awesome product. I'm gonna put a link to all of these items below. And that is the end result of the cleaning. It looks awesome on the inside and outside, especially if you go back and rewatch the beginning. Now this is interesting. These are the other chrome pieces on there that I completely forgot to clean in the first round of the chrome polish I used with the turtle wax. So now I'm going through that and just repeating the same process. I have two rags, one with the chrome polish on it and the other one that's going to be used to buff it out. So I went through each one individually, I was being very meticulous. Thankfully I didn't have to do any work inside of these because there wasn't really any rust inside them. I pretty much off camera just took a little bit of an air, uh, air can and just sprayed out any dust that was in there. Once again the end results of this is going to be awesome. I do a better job in this video of actually showing you how shiny they're going to be, unlike with the rims, I kind of failed to do that. So yeah, the end result, they look pretty good. I get a closer picture for you right here. It's going to, yeah, zoom out and kind of lose focus, but once it catches focus again in a second, you'll see they're really clean. They look new, whereas before they were covered in rust and dirt and what I thought were scratches. On to my favorite part, which is putting it all back together. It definitely is a bit nerve wracking because I need to invest in a table, not just like a drum throne. And also because I'm trying not to get my fingerprints all over the snare, but that ended up being frivolous and I just cleaned it off again when I was done. A few things to note, I am going to be using the white lithium grease here in just a moment. For the heads, I'm just going to be using a clear Remo for the resonant bottom, and for the top batter head, I will be using a Remo Reverse Dot. I just happen to like them, they're a preference of mine. And I decided not to change the snares on this drum because the snares were in great condition. And in just a moment here, you're going to see the white lithium grease. I'm going to be using it simply as a means of preserving the lugs when I put them back in. It's just as simple as when you buy a new tube of it, you cut the top of it off with a pair of scissors, and you are just dunking the lugs in there, and then you're putting them inside of there. You're going to put them back on the drums. I highly recommend this product because it will preserve those pieces, especially because they're metal for a long time. So I know I might get a little bit of crap for this, but that is a drum dial. Listen, they're not the best thing in the world for tuning a drum set perfectly, but they're great for getting a start, so I always like to use it when I put new heads on, just to get an even pace and even tension, and then the rest of it I will tune by ear. Once again though, I only use this because I got it for $25 from used music store. Whereas usually these things can run you like 80 to 100 bucks, so it was worth the money for me, but I don't think they're worth the money new. All right, everyone, so now I'm gonna get the Remo reverse dot head on the batter side, and I'm going to get it tuned up, and I'm gonna play a little demo for you, just like last time. Just a quick disclaimer, though, as I said in the other video, I'm not a drummer, I'm just a guitarist who has a drum set, and I'm an audio engineer, so I came and tell you I can really keep a beat, but I wanted to get some type of demo for the, from the snare drum for you, and since I'm still feeling unsafe about bringing people into the home with COVID, you're just gonna have to hear me play but I will give you a few disclaimers. The drum is mixed, but I'm only using EQ, compression, and because my room mic wasn't being cooperative, I do use a little bit of reverb, but it's all stuff that was in-house with Cubebase. Other than the reverb, I use a reverb from Isotope Ozone's mastering system, which I really enjoy. But other than that, it's all the snare drum you're hearing, and the track that I'm gonna be playing to, or at least part of it, is I Believe in Your Victory by This Will Destroy You. So thanks for sticking around, thanks for checking out this process. I was really happy to restore this drum, and I'm excited to get in on a few tracks I record.